Yeah. Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to Restoration. So glad to have you on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, nice and cool outside here in Central Texas. Um, hey, but it's great to be in the house of God and worshiping together. Uh, welcome to all of you that might be joining us online today. Your online pastor is the magnificent uh, Pastor Lynn Cherry, my wife. Uh, I can, so that's why I call her magnificent, of course. Um, but uh, I don't know what maybe you picked up along the week. You know, sometimes uh, as our weeks go along, we we seem to have things just kind of attached to us that maybe weigh us down a little bit. And uh, whether it's something going on in your family or the job or or political system, uh, there's 
there's no lack of things to be concerned about. But there's something about coming in to the presence of God and laying all of that aside and focus in on the one, the lover of our soul, the one that gave his life for you and for me. He says, roll that burden over on me, whatever it might be that's maybe weighing on you this morning. Can we just do that? Just roll that over on Jesus. And he says, take my yoke upon you, which is light and easy. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. That sounds good to me. So God, right now, we just thank you for being here, being here in our presence, being in our homes, our cars, wherever we might be listening and watching. God, thank you for your presence. In your presence is fullness of joy. Oh God, we could use some joy. So thank you for your presence. Thank you, God, for taking our burden and giving us yours, which is light and easy. God, we give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. History can prove, there's nothing you can't do, you are faithful and true.
that again. Great is your faithfulness. Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. my face against the earth so my heart it rises over my head as the weed it bows down low when the autumn wind blows I kneel before the one I love find me grateful find me faithful
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. We hope we are found faithful when the time comes. Thank you so much. That was really inspiring. Really appreciate that. Good morning, church. How are you all doing? Doing good. Oh, please, you can take your seats. And um, as we take our seats, the kids can um, head back for um, Sunday school, right? And the youth could also join um, your pastor out there, the youth pastor. Oh, okay, never mind. We're all in here today, right? Yes, okay, all the youth are in here. But the kids are going, yes, definitely. The kids are going, but the youth are going to stay. All right. Well, um, nice to see your faces once more. Wow, it's been a while. Yeah, please turn to someone and tell them welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Restoration. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. So, you know what? Um, looking through life, right, there's a lot to be seen. And I've come to realize that I love company. There's nothing like good company. And why do I say this? And why do I feel that? I feel that because I think it's in my DNA. Because in Genesis 2.18, right, after God creating Adam, I look at this poor guy and was like, no, nah, it's not good for man to be alone, right? Yeah. And... Even if you go a little back to um, Genesis 1.26, right? God created us in his image. There's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Trinity in one. God is not alone. He's got company. He also made us to have company. We were created to dwell in a community. We were created to need fellowship. So every human being on earth has that kind of thing in their DNA. No matter what you do, you will seek company. So when people come to church, when people try to seek for positive company, please let's extend the hand of fellowship to them. I know sometimes it might be difficult because of our past experience, but please try to extend the hand of fellowship because if we don't, they will find it elsewhere. They might find it in... Um, gym membership, because I know some people do that. Uh, maybe after work drinking, um, a golf club, somewhere. They might find it somewhere, because in our DNA, we are wired to coexist, to live in a community. So when people come out here, please, let's extend a hand of fellowship to them. You never know. You are the only person he might have to hug the whole week. So just give a hug, a handshake, right? Just say hi and let someone feel like they are welcomed. Because they are in the Father's house. We are God's little minions down here. So we get to do his work for him, right? So please, don't hold your hug. Don't hold your handshake. Don't hold your hello. Just extend a hand of fellowship onto others, okay? All right. Um, as we do that, there are other ways we could also do that. And... Um, Restoration has been engaging in all those things to help foster that. Um, we can do that through finances. So um, there are three ways we can give through regular cash. There are envelopes back there we could use um, through the um, Church Center app and also the Zelle um, banking um, system that you could do through your bank. So please, um, it's time to give. Please... Um, Let's take a few minutes to pray on our offering, if we may. Let's pray. Dear God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to give in your house. Because it's not always, or it's not everybody that even have this opportunity. And as we do this, we pray that you help use it for the furtherance of the kingdom business. That every soul that is out there that we can touch, you will help us touch with this giving and help with the management of this house, this house of yours, 
And we pray as we give that you will use it as an opportunity to bless our families, to bless our friends, and to grant us the resources we need to extend the hand of fellowship unto others when the opportunity arises. We thank and bless your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. All right, and I'm on? Good. Okay. Um, so every week, a group of us gathers to pray on Wednesdays for you and for your prayer requests and for the needs of our community and our world. And we love that you trust us to pray, and we love even more that you trust God to answer. And he does, right? And so keep those prayer requests coming. You can use the uh, QR code on the back of the chairs in front of you, and there's always a link um, for those of you who are online uh, in the comments. And so Lockie is part of our prayer group, and she often shares at the beginning a scripture or a quote or a thought to get us started. And a few weeks ago, she shared a quote from St. Augustine, a bishop of the church in the fourth century. And he said, trust the past to God's mercy, trust the present to God's love, and trust the future to God's providence. I'm going to say that again because I needed to hear it again. Trust the past to God's mercy, the present to God's love, and the future to God's providence. And it made me think about this message that I was working on in Micah in our Summer in the Minor series. And it made me think, too, that God has our past, our present, and our future. He takes care of it all. And God has a timeline. We have a timeline of our lives, but God has a holy timeline, right, of what's unfolding in his story. And the holy timeline is not one where we know exactly what's going to happen when, but we can look back and we can see God's faithfulness and his trustworthiness. We can trust him with our past, our present, and our future. God does what he says he will do, and we can count on that. I see head shaking, and act accordingly to that, right? And it's hard not to act according to our own will, our own desires. If we don't regularly take a step back and look at that big picture, we can be so focused in, I know I can, on our own lives, on our issues, on our frustrations, that we totally miss what God is doing in the big picture. Sometimes even in our own lives, we're missing. So let's look at this holy timeline of past, present, and future with regards to Micah and Jesus and us. We need to get some perspective, as did the people of Micah's time. So let's go back in the timeline. Micah was a prophet during the reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And this was during 742 to 687 BC. Micah was from Morsha, a Judean village near Gath on the border of Philistia. It was about 20 miles southwest of Jerusalem. Okay, so Jerusalem to Morshaf was like Austin to Kyle, Texas. And Micah lived at the same time as Isaiah and Hosea. Jeremiah came about 60 years later, but he actually quoted Micah quite a bit. Micah's message was mainly for Judah, the southern kingdom, but also for Israel, the northern kingdom. He told them that both kingdoms were headed for destruction. Sin was rampant. Idols were set up everywhere. People would covet what didn't belong to them and seize it. If they wanted it, they took it. And King Ahaz not only set up pagan idols everywhere, but he even eventually nailed the temple door shut. Can you imagine if the doors to our church were nailed shut? Micah looked around and he saw corruption, bribery, idolatry, 
hate, injustice, pride, society was falling apart. God's people were falling apart. And Micah knew what was going to happen. And no one was listening to him. They didn't believe him. And can you imagine how he felt? Maybe you felt that way before, not listened to. Micah wanted the people to hear what God was saying, to repent and head in the right direction. But they didn't want to listen. And Micah says they only wanted prophets who would tell them what they wanted to hear. People wanted to stay comfortable and not be accused of wrongdoing, even if it meant they were lying to themselves. Now, I admit, I relate to this, sadly. I've done this many, many times, getting stuck with that wrong goal of present comfort. It can go way past self-care and into the use of an idol to lie to oneself or sometimes others. It might be due to valid trauma that's been done from the past, done by others, or to ourselves. We cover up and pretend that everything's okay. Drinking, eating, shopping, social media, gaming, so many things in our society that can become idols and become like headphones to just block out life dealing with life and dealing with sin. Sadly, I do relate. Anyone with me on that? Mm. And are these idols like false prophets telling us what we want to hear? The false prophets in Micah's time were willing to take money or goods for their falsely comforting words. And the people didn't have perspective. They weren't thinking about the prophets from the past and how they spoke truth, and they sure weren't thinking about the possible future. In the present, they just wanted to do what they wanted to do. Well, let's look at the first part of our St. Augustine quote again. We can trust the past to God's mercy. Thankfully, that is so true. God has always been merciful to his people. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't consequences like the ones that Micah was forewarning about. But another way we can build our trust in God so that we don't mess up and need his mercy so often is by looking at the past and seeing that God does what he says he will do. Right? Let's look back and see that Micah's prophecies were from God. They came true. Micah said Samaria in the northern kingdom Israel would fall, and it did, to the Assyrians. Actually, it happened during Micah's lifetime. Micah said Jerusalem in the southern kingdom Judah would fall, and people would be carried into exile to Babylon. It happened. And Babylon wasn't even a powerful empire at the time that Micah said this. Micah said there would be a time of darkness with no prophets and no visions, and there was. After Malachi, there were no prophets for 400 years until John the Baptist. Micah said God would gather a remnant of people to work with God and return to the land after the exile. God did it. Micah said the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem He said this hundreds of years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And Micah said, he will shepherd his flock and he will be their peace. And we know that Jesus is our good shepherd and Jesus is our Prince of Peace. Amen? Amen. Micah says, Jesus is coming back to set up his kingdom on earth. Isaiah says it. Jeremiah, Joel, Zechariah, Malachi, John in Revelation. And Micah said that there would be another remnant in the future. It's us. Amen. Amen. A holy timeline. We can look at prophecy and history and be encouraged that God does what he says he will do. This is faith building even if it's hard. We can trust him. 
what in your life has God told you would happen and it did? Think about that for a minute. Or what are you still waiting on that you know God told you would happen? Well, during the time when my parents lived here uh, in town for the winters, they were snowbirds from Chicago, I was just going about one of my days. My kids were little, and I had like two minutes to myself. And in that time, God just suddenly gave me this vision of our church directory and my mom and dad's name in it. And I just busted out <coughs> crying. And I was just uh, overjoyed, but they had been so hurt by their churches that they weren't attending any church and hadn't for many, many years. And my tears of joy, though, were like, wow, God totally just showed me this. And then I admit, I immediately kind of went to skepticism. This is how I kind of actually was confirmed that that was God speaking, because I immediately went to, oh, that's probably not going to happen. And I realized, no, I'm saying that, and that is not right, because God is saying this. Yeah, and so I just held on to that, and I hoped, and I prayed, and you know what? God did it. <laughs> he did it, and I, when it came true, I just realized that, the, you know, you think names in a directory, but it was a symbol. It was a symbol of God's healing and restoration, and God said it was something he said he would do, and he did it, right? Because God does what he says he will do. I have a few other things that God has told me will happen that I'm waiting on and believing in. What has God told or shown you will happen that you can hold fast to? Ask him. And there's a lot more in the Bible than what we've seen in Micah today. God doesn't give us those exact times of when things will happen for our own good, right? If we knew exactly when or even near, what would humans do? Mess it up, right? <laughs> and not do what was required by God. God promised, as we said, he promised it in Micah 2, 12 through 13, that a remnant of God's people would return from exile in Babylon. And Isaiah 11:1 1 tells us that through this remnant, this stump of Jesse that was cut off but still alive, a new shoot, a new branch would grow. Jesus, the Messiah, descended from King David. Isaiah told the people Jesus is coming. Micah told the people Jesus is coming. Other prophets, we said, said Jesus is coming. And then silence for 400 years, waiting. And then Jesus came, y'all. <laughs> he came and he changed everything. He came because of love. He came to show us love. He came to show us how to love. And we can trust the present to God's love. God does what he says he will do. I'm not going to say that enough today. We can count on his love and all his truths and his promises in this present age. He gives us his people the present-day remnant, he gives us all that we need to do what we're called to do, what is required of us. God tells us in Micah 6, 8. If you know Micah, you knew this was coming. He has shown you what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Yeah. Act justly. We are to do the right thing, to be fair and honest, to not make excuses, to have eyes to see like Jesus and be willing to act. Act. Not just believe, but act. Yeah. Paul tells us in Philippians 2.12, says, he says, work hard to show the results of your having salvation. We don't have to work for our salvation. It's a gift. But when we have it, work hard to show the results of having it. 
obeying God with deep reverence. And James tells us in chapter 1, verse 22, don't just listen to God's word, but do what it says. Action, word, verbs, I like them, act. We are not in the business of self-preservation. Our own wants or just creating our worldly lifestyle. We're not even in the business of country preservation. We are followers of Jesus and we are in the business of people preservation, especially those who are victims of injustice, the hurting, the oppressed, and the alone. We are to do something. The problem may seem too big to tackle, and it probably is to tackle alone, but Jesus can multiply our efforts like he did with the fish and the loaves. He's a multiplying God. And we have been hearing to do something a lot lately. We've been hearing it from our pastors, from our other speakers. God is speaking. When you hear it from a lot of places and a lot of people, this is not something that we all talked about. It's just coming up because God is speaking. And I think we should listen and act, right? Pastor Tony Evans says, care enough to be an encourager. One person can't care for everybody, but one person can care for somebody. One person can care for somebody. What else is required of us? To love mercy. When I think about mercy, I think about forgiveness. And if we love mercy, we will love to forgive. Love to forgive. Hmm. Anybody having the same thought I did when this came out? Who loves to forgive? Gosh, I think we often love getting even more, or seeking revenge, or seeing bad things happen to the person who hurt us and feeling good about it. Ugh. Sorry, God. Sorry. He says, show mercy to those who wrong you or wrong those you love. Doesn't mean they can keep wronging you. Doesn't mean you need to stay in that place, that situation. But we are to forgive and to love being merciful. I wonder if God loves to have mercy on us and forgive us. I believe he does. And after writing this a few weeks ago, I've been working on loving mercy, on loving to forgive, and it is a challenge. <sighs> but I'm thankful for that challenge that God gives me and how he helps me grow. Thank you, God. So next, walk humbly with your God. Not just walk humbly, not just walk humbly with God, walk humbly with your God, a close together relationship with him. I love Psalm 95.7. This jumped out at me many years ago, and I just love to say it. Psalm 95.7 says, you are our God, and we are your people. You are our God and we are your people. Listen when I say, you are my God and I am your daughter. Do you feel that connection in saying those words? Try it yourself. You are my God and I am your son or daughter. Yeah. We are to walk humbly with our God, not with pride, not with self-sufficiency, that doesn't mean we can't be proud of ourselves or others, but we should not put ourselves or anything before God. Everything comes after him. He's first. Be thankful, though, for the gifts and talents God has given you. You have them, and use them for the good of God's kingdom to show Jesus' love to others. God doesn't want religious showy sacrifices. He doesn't want pretend perfection. He doesn't even want perfection from us, right? He wants us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with him, our God. This is what God requires from us, and this is how we get ready for the next part of the timeline. Let's not procrastinate. Let's not be afraid to make mistakes. We will make mistakes in trying to do what's required, but if we walk humbly with God, he will be merciful and he will empower us to grow and do these things. Wouldn't it be wonderful if 
others could feel what we feel as part of this church community, this community of Jesus followers. There's someone out there right now who needs to feel loved. There's someone that wants to belong and feel encouraged and supported in their God-given purposes, to know that they even have God-given purposes. We have all that to share with others because we know Jesus. We can help change their timeline. So looking back at our St. Augustine quote, third part, we can trust the future to God's providence. God's providence is defined as his provision of protective and spiritual care. We can trust God's providence. And he also invites us in to help provide this protective and spiritual care. Through the hope of a restoration, he's allowed us to carry to others. We are hope carriers, just like Micah was. Look at someone near you and say, you are a hope carrier. (laughs) Amen. We are the present-day remnant who carries the hope of restoration. You are a part of the present-day remnant, and you carry the hope of restoration. Bring it. Bring it to others. Another definition of providence is timely preparation for future eventualities. I'm going to say that again. Those big words. Timely preparation for future eventualities. We can help people prepare for an eternity with God. Jesus is coming. Just like Micah said the Messiah was coming to be born, he said Jesus was coming back to set up his kingdom. Micah and Isaiah both say, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples, all nations, will stream to it. These are some hard days. Some, for some, they're harder than others. There have been hard days all throughout our history, and there are hard days coming in the future. But through God's providence, all of that is taken care of. Jesus is for sure coming back to set up his eternal kingdom, on earth because God does what he says he will do and it's going to be so wonderful God himself will be the temple God himself will be the temple and the glory of God will give light everywhere beauty will be everywhere and God will wipe every tear from every eye there will be no more sorrow no more pain. We can sit at Jesus' feet and listen and learn. Imagine that. I'm going to love that. This day will come. God has declared it. Let us live in the hope of this assurance and share it with others as we love them. We can trust the future to God's providence. There's a holy timeline unfolding. It was a great thing when Micah told the people Jesus was coming to be born in Bethlehem, and it is a great thing now when we read in God's word that Jesus is coming again. Just like the people of Micah's time, we have a choice. We can choose to believe that Jesus is coming, and we can get excited, and we can get ready, and we can get our community and our descendants ready by acting justly, by loving mercy, and by walking humbly with our God. We can look back and see that God does what he says he will do. We can be part of the remnant carrying the hope of restoration to the people in our world, the lost, the hurting, the beat down, the cast out. They need Jesus. God loves them all, and he's sending us to love them too and point them to Jesus. Trust the past to God's mercy, the present to God's love, and the future to God's providence. Said another way, we can trust the past, the present, and the future to God because he is merciful, he is loving, he is in control and will protect and care for us eternally. I want to close 
with Micah's words in chapter 7, the last chapter of Micah, verses 7 and 18 through 20. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. My God will hear me. Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. You will be true to Jacob and show mercy to Abraham as you pledged an oath to our fathers in days long ago. God is trustworthy. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, that even though there are things you require of us, you do not expect us to do it alone. Thank you that we can ask you for help. And we do pray that you'd help us, God, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, our God. Purify us, Lord. Destroy and remove any idols we are clinging to. Give us ears and eyes to see where you're leading us and give us the will to go there. God, I give you permission to change me. Please do. Maybe others here would like to pray that too. If you'd like to, give God permission to change you and ask him to. Mold us, make us, Lord, into what you need us to be, to live out what you're calling us to do. Thank you, God, that we can trust you with our past, our present, and our future. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to save us. And thank you, Jesus, you are coming again. We pray to stay strong and focused as we carry your hope of restoration to others until you return, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your mighty and holy name. Amen.
Hey, let's give it up for Sharla and Eric and the team. Thank you guys for leading us today. And uh, what was that? Was that message from Nancy? Great. Yeah, you may be seated because I have some opportunities to share with you. Baptisms, water baptisms, is coming up August fourteenth. So if you or your child are interested in being water baptized then uh, let one of the pastors here know, uh, Nancy, Lynn, myself, know, uh, but you got to let us know before the end of July. So uh, August 14th is water baptisms. And then every Sunday in July is VBS for our kids here on Sunday mornings. And at Spark Studios, it's going to be really cool, fun, like uh, be a great opportunity for your kids to invite their friends, and bring them to church, and uh, they can learn about Jesus in a fun, exciting way. And then, uh, you guys know we're in a series called The Summer in the Minors, which is baseball, in case you didn't know. Baseball, minor. And we just happen to have a minor league baseball team here in the area called the Round Rock Express. And uh, so we are going to go to a game. So is anybody interested in going to a baseball game? Yeah, yeah, all right three of you. Um, if you're online, come to the game. Uh, the game that we're going to go to, though, is July 31st, and I have no idea who's playing other than the Round Rock Express. Sacramento. Oh, that's for all the California people. <laughs> uh, all right. But you got to wear your Round Rock Express garb. But that's, that's all I'm saying. What? Remember <laughs> mercy. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta walk in that, don't I? Okay, all right. Hey, um, but if you're interested, we we're gonna get group tickets, and this is like a ten dollar discount, and be good for us to all sit together. And uh, I think we'll probably have some sign up in the lobby for that. But we'd really just like to know who's interested, so we uh, can get tickets. So yeah, all right. And at least six of you were, so that's great. Um, oh, what am I doing now? I didn't, I didn't make notes other than this. Uh, huh? <laughs> yes, I, I, and I'm trying to figure out what Nancy's telling me, though. It's just like, <laughs> like yeah, let's <laughs> say goodbye to the audio online audience, yeah. It's like, this is, this is family, right? We're, we're. I like to think this is just our living room. We're just kind of gathering together and, and uh, get together in our living room. It's, it keeps it comfortable. Um, listen, I think this week, uh, I mean, like kind of started the, the, the morning with, you know, let's lay everything aside and let's just focus on Jesus, and uh, which is what we've been doing for the past hour. Uh, but then taking the message that Nancy shared with us and living that out, and, uh, and walking close with Jesus every day. And uh, last night at um, the, the men's barbecue, which was great, men, you missed it. Uh, it's a great barbecue. And um, uh, we, had, we had a gentleman share there last night just about starting the day with God. And um, that's a great way to start your day, right? I mean, it's just like, Holy Spirit, come. I need you. God, I want to hear from you. I want to follow you today. I want to respond to what it is I hear you say to me. When God shows me somebody to reach out to, I actually do it. When God shows me somebody to help, I actually do it. When God shows me a place to give, I actually do it. So I just encourage you all week, let's live that way. Let's wake up in the morning. God, lead me. Show me. Is that a deal? Yeah. Amen. Well, Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you, God, 
that you are equipping us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is our helper, our teacher, our guide. Lead us into all truth. We thank you, Father, for showing us people to reach out to, people to love well this week. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll say goodbye to our online audience. We love you. We're going to stick around here in the room and for a time of prayer. Can I get house lights? So, any prayer requests in the room or praise reports? Let's, let's hear what God's doing through you.